Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash Entitled People, where people truly believe that they can do what they want, when they want, because they're special. And this episode is a wild one, guys. We've got girlfriends trying to destroy lives, a sister war where one sister demands the other give her their baby, OP finds out her husband's marrying her for money, and a family gets mad because OP won't let them trash her house. Ain't that something? Guys, I hope you enjoy the stories. Don't shake your your heads too hard. And as always, you can send or link your post to this email right here. Let's dive in. So I'm a 24 year old male and I've been with my girlfriend who's 29 years old, let's call her Janice, for two and a half years. Now Janice has always been a little bit on the entitled side, but that's just her being a single child I guess. I had just finished my education when we started dating, and I've been doing all sorts of jobs since, sometimes two at a time. I did this to expand my resume and gather job experience. I've worked in cafes, bookstores, a library, a grocery store, and as an English tutor. Most of these jobs lasted about three to five months. My shortest stay was two and a half weeks. My longest was eight months, ending in termination for something I never did, or at least I didn't remember doing. The thing is, every job I worked at, people always called to complain about me. People left bad reviews about me, former employees called to inform my new bosses about how horrible I am, and much, much more subtle stuff that I couldn't disprove. But I was too anxious to do anything about it. I just told my girlfriend, and she comforted me. She supported me every single time that I got my life ruined by these people. But I kept going, though they kept finding me. So fast forward to last week. I currently hold a part-time position at a bakery. I've been working there for two and a half months. It's going okay, but my manager approached me about something regarding Google reviews. Somebody was complaining about an employee, and their description of them could only really fit me. It was on a day where we were really short staffed, so I could have been the only person in the store that day for all I know. Anyway, their review contained some pretty elaborate and nasty comments about me and what I said to the customer. This happened on one or two of my jobs already. I told my manager that it was all pretty bogus and that someone had a vendetta against me as this has happened before. My manager believed me and she told me that she'll dismiss the comment. On my break, I checked out the review myself. Their username was kind of stupid and I'm not gonna type it out here since I still work there but I'll just call them McMurdle as it was in the same range of sounds kind of fake, but not really. Anyways, I come home, and I don't tell Janice about it. She's heard it all before, so I don't see the point in complaining about another time I almost lost my position. We chat, and all's well, and she leaves the room to go shower. Her phone's on the table, and suddenly, she gets a notification or an email of some sort from Google. Now, I don't remember what it said exactly, but the pop-up read something along the lines of, Mick Myrtle, manager has responded to your review. Seeing that, my heart dropped. I've been trying to ignore it since, and this was two days ago. It just fit in the picture of bad reviews. It fit in the picture of the phone complaints my workplaces have received about me in the past. And it fits in the picture of all the sketchy things that I've been fired for. But why would she do that though? I'm looking for an explanation. This literally can't be. She's the only thing keeping me sane throughout all this, and I don't know what to do. Update. So first of all, we broke up. Anyways, let's start from the beginning. Monday of the following week, I couldn't take the uncertainty anymore. I told my ex that I needed her booking account to book a train ticket to visit dad for a few days. She complied, and when she was in the shower getting ready for work, I booked my ticket and started looking through her emails. After some digging, I found an email to herself, which contained a spreadsheet file. The spreadsheet contained just about all the information about me that there was. Phone numbers, emails, work times, colleagues, their numbers, their social medias, as well as some emails and passwords that she used for accounts to ruin my life with. Everything was on there, conveniently sorted for her to ruin my life as efficiently as possible. When she left for work, I decided that it would be best to immediately pack my stuff. Nothing that mattered would be left behind. I felt like a wanted man, like I was being hunted despite nothing being seemingly out of place. I called my boss, told her I would be taking some time off work, and then headed to see my dad. Needless to say, he was the sanity I needed. I cried about everything I saw. I panicked for a whole two days straight about how my life was ruined and I didn't know what to do. My dad had to sleep on the couch in the guest room because I was scared of my ex coming in. He handled it like a champ though. He called the police, a lawyer, and most recently a therapist for me because I was in the most horrible state of my entire life. We're currently sorting out the legal stuff. I haven't talked to my ex, except for letting her know that it was over and that she's a sick psychopath. 
She replied that I need her in my life, and when I come crawling back, she'll have moved on. My dad just handled the rest. I changed all my passwords, and now I'm looking for a place to live. Okay guys, this post was absolutely nutso. Like, imagine dating someone and they're secretly out to ruin your life like that. And it really seems like something from a movie. All I can say is thank goodness OP had his dad to run to and he broke that relationship off. But my question is why? What would make OP's ex-girlfriend do this? Like, I know some people can be twisted, guys, but this is next level. Like, she literally was the reason that OP couldn't hold down a job. And I can't help but to wonder if this is some sort of sick game she was playing, where she loves the fact that she's OP's shoulder to cry on when things don't work out in his life. I really don't know, guys. Again, to me, this is some sort of sick, twisted game she's playing. And thank goodness OP caught her, because who knows how long she'd keep doing this for. But guys, leave your comments below on why you think somebody would do this to somebody else. Like, it just baffles me when that somebody else happens to be her boyfriend of two and a half years. Some people be out of their minds, I tell you. I'm a 28 year old female and I'm currently 19 weeks pregnant. My husband is 29 years old and he and I are very excited. This is our first baby and we've been trying for a few months. We announced the pregnancy a month ago at a dinner party we hosted and everybody just seemed surprised and overjoyed. However, my sister, who's 35 years old, who I'll call Karen, immediately burst into tears and she asked me how I could do this to her. I just stared at her and I asked, what? And then she starts ranting, saying that I always got everything I wanted, which isn't true, and that she knew I got pregnant just so I could rub her infertility in her face. She then screamed at me for 5 minutes in front of everyone, how I didn't deserve to be a mom, and how she should be the one pregnant right now. My parents left with her soon after, and the party was basically over. I was really disturbed by my sister's reaction, because we've been pretty close before, and she's never done anything like this. Karen then called me the next day, apologizing for how she acted at my announcement, and asked if we could meet up for coffee. I accepted, thinking this was going to be a face-to-face -face apology, but I was wrong. We met up, and she pretended like nothing even happened. She then starts a big speech about her infertility, how heartbreaking it is to be growing life inside of her just to lose it, and how she'd always wanted children of her own. She then proceeded to ask me if I would consider getting an abortion to make things fair for her. Hearing that, I was speechless, and after a moment of my jaw on the ground, I picked it up and I told her no. I will not terminate my pregnancy to make things fair for her. That's when she said that I should think about letting her adopt my baby. I just stared at her and asked her if she was serious. She said she was, and I just dropped my part of the bill on the table and then left. Her husband then texted me a rant that night how I made Karen cry, and that all they wanted to do was be parents, and that this meant so much to them and I owed them for being more successful than them. Husband and I invested many years into our jobs, and we've worked very hard to earn what we earn now. I told them that he and I had been hoping for kids too, and that I wasn't giving up my baby. Karen later sends me a long letter, like four pages, how she had always wanted to be a mom, and could I consider either abortion or letting her adopt my baby. How I should care about my older sister's happiness, how she would make a better mom than I, and how the oldest kid should always have the first grandchild. The worst part of it all is she wrote that I could always have another baby, since it was so easy for me to conceive. But she doesn't know the struggles that we've gone through for this pregnancy. After that, she quieted down some, and I thought we were done with this, except it wasn't. She had posted my sonogram on her Facebook, and she captioned it, Hubby and I are expecting, we can't wait to meet our little princess, followed by dozens of her Facebook friends liking and commenting on the picture. I was seeing red, I texted her and demand she take the post down. No reply. I then text her husband, also no reply. So I called my mom, and I told her what happened. She was able to make Karen take the post down, luckily enough. Karen then called me petty for being a grown woman and calling my mom to tattle on her, and she's continued to demand that I give up my baby. I've sent her a letter explaining that I've had enough of her nonsense, I'm keeping my baby, and that I recommend she get some help. I then added, if she continues, I will not hesitate to call 911. This weekend, however, was the last straw. My mom and dad have the spare key to my house, and while she was over at their house for brunch, she took the key. While my husband and I were at work, she broke into our house, and she stole all the clothing, blankets, diapers, bottles, and pretty much any other item we had bought for the baby, except the furniture. It was later returned after my mom found it in her car. 
I called the police, but they told me they couldn't do anything because I had no proof and because it was all returned. My partner and I are moving in April, but I'm still scared my sister will find out where we live and she'll take my child. And I get that she's a bit upset and jealous due to her infertility, but that shouldn't mean that I have to give up my baby. My parents know about this and they've been doing their best to get her some help. She doesn't want to adopt because she wants a child that's her own flesh and blood. I'm due in August, and the stress she's causing cannot and will not be good for me or the baby. My husband's looking into a cease and desist letter. Is there anything else I should do or say? I'm scared for my baby. Update. So we've had all the locks changed, cameras installed, and a ring doorbell. I've started saving every letter and screenshotting every message my sister sent, and I plan to take them to court for a restraining order pretty soon. We've also been seriously documenting everything. My husband and I are planning an anniversary trip next week, and it's going to be good to clear our heads from my sister. I've also called the police to report her for harassment, and they gave her a warning. My sisters called me saying that if I won't give her my child, I can at least pay for multiple rounds of IVF, which I've not replied to other than refusing. She's been begging my parents to convince me to give up my baby, which they refuse to do. They've also been given a statement that basically says if they give her my contact information, they will not see my baby, to which they've agreed. I've since changed my phone number and we're moving very soon. My sister does not know the new address. She actually stood on our doorstep for 20 minutes a few days ago, banging on the door, yelling. My husband opened a window and told her if she didn't leave, he would let the dog out, and then threatened to call the police. We have a rather small but hyper puppy who jumps on everyone, and barks a lot, and she's quite scared of dogs, so this made her leave. We're planning on getting a restraining order as soon as possible, and we're looking forward to our trip. I'm already sick of being pregnant, and I'm not even in the third trimester. I just want my baby. And so does OP's sister, right? But yeah, I believe the sister needs some help because I don't think she's in her right state of mind. And guys, I don't say that to insult her or make a joke. The stuff she's done or what she's doing or may even be planning on doing is outright dangerous and I do believe she needs help. And guys, we've all seen those cases where people murder others for their babies, right? And it does happen. And again, we don't know how far a sister's willing to go with this. Like, we don't know if her jealousy will one day get the better of her, and she'll do something malicious, like poison OP, or do something that might lead to OP losing the pregnancy. So yeah, go no contact, and never let up. That's just what I think. So to preface, my family owns a business that's very well known in our sector, and it makes loads of profit. Thus, I'm a trust fund baby. I try not to be spoiled, and I've always worked myself. I met my fiancé Mark when I was 20 and working as a waitress. We began dating a few months later, and he proposed to me last year. Now Mark is not poor, he's upper middle class. And while he doesn't struggle in life, he doesn't have too much to spend, and he's lived very frugal. I thought he was an honest man because he's always wanted to pay for his own things, and he rejects expensive family holidays when we were dating. And he would cook for me instead of going with me to dine outside. What I want to say is that I've never had the impression that Mark was trying to take advantage of me or my family. In the beginning, my family was a little sketched out, and they brought up the gold digger argument. And I stood up for him, and I fought with my dad. They came to love and accept him. When Mark graduated, dad hired him, and now he's in a high-earning position. On Sunday, I was supposed to work in the evening, and then I was gonna go stay with my sister. But I got a fever and was basically non-functioning, so I stayed home. Instead of staying in our bedroom, I make my way to the guest room, that's way better ventilated, has a mini fridge, and its own bathroom. Mark came home when I was fast asleep, and I was woken up by loud voices in our garden. I pushed the curtains a bit to the side, and Mark was there with a few friends. Just as I wanted to say hello, I noticed they were talking about me. His friend just kept laughing and calling Mark the man. They then start laughing about me, being willing to not sign a prenup. Then one of the girls that was with them said something along the lines of, Jesus, you're about to make some bank, Mark. At that, Mark just laughed and he said, Yeah, three more years and I'm free. At this moment, I felt sick to my stomach and I wanted to throw up. I kept hearing them call me a trust fund Barbie and stupid and so on. I didn't know what to do, so I just lied petrified in my bed and waited till the people left and Mark went to bed. I then texted my sister and snuck out to her place in the middle of the night and just passed out without telling her anything. I haven't returned home and I just told Mark that I was sick and didn't want to make him sick. My sister's been really worried and I just feel so ashamed about everything. My family was right, Mark is a gold digger and I fell for it. Even if I tell my family what happened, I have no proof. My father can't fire him just because he's a dick. 
As far as I know, he's excellent at what he does, and he has no legal foot to fire him, I think. I just feel so confused, ashamed, and angry. Update. So I was very tempted to play the long game and just lead him on, but I decide to resent him with a prenup to look into his reaction. After telling my dad, we invited Mark for lunch and would serve him the prenup there. However, just to be sure about things, I asked him if he had anyone over, because our neighbors had complained about loud noises. He said yes, that his buddies were there. He didn't mention the girl I saw. So we finished lunch, and my dad served him the papers, saying this was a must for getting married. And you could instantly see that he didn't expect this. He just got angry, and he asked me to speak to him alone. We went to the other room, and he began babbling about blindsiding him, and that he felt that this was a personal attack. He was trying so hard to sell me on the role of being victim, and making me out to be the villain. He then said that I need to think everything through, and left. And I have to admit, I kind of broke down and began second-guessing me, but I kept it together. My family happily didn't pull the I told you so's. So we looked into everything, and I have the legal right to evict him. The lawyer handled everything. He wrote an official eviction notice. And after a lot of talk, Dad decides he would present Mark with a deal, so that he would leave the company. After all that was sorted out, I decide to simply text Mark and say, Hey Mark, trust fund Barbie here. As you said, you would be free in three years, and I'll do you a big favor and set you free now. Kisses. My phone then completely blew up with Mark's messages after I sent that. He texted and called me so many times that I had to switch off my phone. He then came to my sister's place as he wanted to explain the situation. Mark promised me that it was just a joke, like a million times. I said it wasn't cutting it. I told him that they disrespected me in my own house, and I didn't want to be with someone that puts me down in order to appear better. That's when he pleaded, cried, and begged me not to end things. When I wasn't budging, he got mad at me and accused me of spying on him and ruining his life. Then his manner changed once again to apologetic. He eventually owned up to the comment he made, still insisting that it was a crappy, crappy joke. And then, when I asked him why he didn't tell me about those random girls that appeared to know so much about me, he told me this weird story of them being cousins of one of his buddies, and that they know of me because of my Instagram. My Instagram's private, and I have like 30 followers. I stood strong, and I ended things right there with him. I'll never know exactly what his plan was, but it's better to have things this way. We'll have to sort out some financial stuff, but after that, I won't ever see Mark again. What an idiot Mark was, right? Like, if he was using her for money, the number one rule is don't ever say it out loud. I'm just kidding, guys. Jokes. But yeah, like, we don't know enough about the situation to know what Mark was really planning. But I will say that guys do say really, really stupid stuff when they're with their friends. And it might have been a really bad joke that OP happened to hear, we'll never know. Like, was it an overreaction on OP's part to throw away five years over something Mark said behind her back? Maybe. But maybe Mark should have signed the prenup if he really loved her, and wasn't in it for just the money. Again, guys, I'm just saying what I think. And for all of you who are listening who might be ultra wealthy, what would you do if you caught your significant other saying stuff like this? I'd really love to know. So this actually happened a long time ago, but it still amuses me when I remember it. So I thought you guys might like it too. This takes place in the late 90s, and I'm about 12 years old, living at home with my mom, who's the manager of a department of the local hospital at the time. It was before email or texting, and caller ID wasn't much of a thing either. My mom gave out her home phone number for staff to call her at home if there was an emergency. Naturally, her definition of an emergency and theirs did not match up. So one day, my older sister and I were home, and the phone rang. My sister was in another room, so I grabbed it, and it was Karen from my mom's team. The following mess of a conversation happened. Karen said, Can I speak to your mom? To which I say, Oh, I'm sorry, she's not home, can I take a message? I said that because mom had practically coached me to say that every time I took a call for her. Karen said, I wanted to ask her for Saturday off. I respond, Okay, I'll pass the message on. Karen says to me, So, can I have Saturday off? I say to her, I don't know. Karen responds, well, can't you check? I tell her no, and she says, I don't know why it's so hard. Just look at your mom's diary or calendar or whatever and tell me if I can take the day off. I say to her, I'm sorry, I can't do that. I don't know what I'm looking at. The Karen would not let it go. She kept pushing me and saying, I don't know why you're being so difficult. Just tell me. It's at that point I say, I'm sorry, you really need to speak to my mom. I'm 12, and I have no idea if you can take the day off. 
Karen then asked, well, when's your mother coming home? I tell her I'm not sure, later tonight, but she didn't say a time. Karen then lets out a huge sigh and says, ugh, just tell me I can take Saturday off. I try to tell her again that I'm sorry, I can't help her, and that's when she yells at me and says, Ugh, you are useless. I'll just talk to your mother tomorrow instead, since you won't help me. She then hung up, and I thought, what the hell, I was mortified since I thought I effed up, but my mom hit the roof when I told her. And after that, she stopped the entire team from calling the home number. And it also turned out that Karen only wanted Saturday off, so she and all her friends could go drinking Friday night. And she didn't want to get up for work the next day. Well, don't we all, Karen. But yeah, calling the boss's kid useless is a good way to not get a Saturday off. In fact, if I were the boss and Karen called my house and harassed my child who told her many times they can't authorize a day off, I'd not only give Karen a Saturday off, but I'd give her all her future days off. And for all who happen to be wondering, OP comes into the comments and says, I forgot to put in the story, but Karen did get the day off. My mom kept a calendar on the wall at work, as well as her diary. So Karen could easily see the day she wanted was available when she got to work the next day. She did have to have a meeting with my mom and another manager though, so they could explain that she couldn't expect a child to act as her manager. So my husband and I finally bought our first house. It's a five bedroom, three bath, a year ago. Over the holidays, we thought we'd take on the role of hosting a few get together. From my perspective, it was hell. I hated every second of it. I've never really hosted anything or entertained or whatever you want to call it. Maybe it's because I'm not used to the requirements. But growing up, my mom or dad would host family and they were nothing like this. My in-laws, however, do things like they would let their kids run around screaming and yelling up and down the stairs, touching things that don't belong to them, and making messes and not cleaning up after themselves. The parents would never bring anything for the kids to do, and they would get pissy at us for not having anything for them. They'd also bring a dog into our house and let the dog all over the furniture, and they would stomp around the house with their shoes on despite being asked to remove them. They would also leave trash and paper plates sitting around everywhere, instead of placing it in the trash. And they also opened multiple bottles and cans of drinks and only took a sip and left it open. Only one person asked if we need help at any point. And it was my husband's brother's new girlfriend who we were all meeting for the first time. She offered to help clean up, bring out food, etc. This was a terrible experience. My husband was shocked at his family's behavior and he didn't know what to say. And I don't blame him for this at all. He was seeing his family through new eyes as well. When he talked to his mom and dad after, they just laughed at us and they said, that's what hosting is. You have to accept what your guests may or may not do. So we've decided together that we would rather not go through all this again. Easter is coming up and my in-laws asked what our plans are. My husband said that we're not gonna host after everyone's awful manners. His mom and dad are very upset with us. We have the big house, so they figured it would be on us from now on to host. We said that the only way we would ever consider hosting again is if every member of his family pitched in some way. They said that defeats the purpose of someone else hosting and that no one should be expected to pitch in if we offered to host. So we said we won't host. Maybe I'm just not meant to host, but are we truly so far out of bounds to refuse to host anymore because of how his family behaves? Am I the a-hole in this situation? Yeah, I don't think anyone is gonna say that OP's the a-hole for not wanting to host in their house anymore. Your house, your rules. And if people are ignoring those rules, then I think it's fair to not host. Like, I wouldn't want to host either if every single time I do host, my house basically gets destroyed by animals. But who knows, maybe they feel they can do this because they're family. And we all know how entitled family can be, right? And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. If you did, hit that thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing so you don't miss these crazy stories. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, it's an r slash I don't work here lady episode, where OP doesn't serve a Karen and she tries to get him jailed. It's a wild story, so go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.